Welcome back to the Blame Game for the first week of Worlds Group Stage. Ah, Worlds with a magical time where everyone gets their hopes and dreams up before inevitably having the salt start flowing again. We have Korean apologists, NA fanboys, European dreamers, there's so many different flavors to choose from. Too many in fact, so I apologize in advance if I don't hit on a topic that you found interesting during this group series because there's really just too many to choose from. To kick things off, we'll start with something that gave birth to some of the best memes we've seen out of world so far, and it's Meteos' Lee Sin. He played it in the first two games of group stage, but wasn't able to get any kills or assists in the early game, which is in sharp contrast to the Lee Sin that we saw to Sven Skaren. If you haven't seen the game 2 thread, it's hilarious, but is there any truth behind the jokes? I want to start off by talking about Meteos' style as a jungler. He's never been a very aggro one, and tends to focus more on efficiency, control, and getting small advantages over time. It's usually not how we're used to seeing Lee Sin played, and I definitely wouldn't call it the optimal way of playing him, but it can work. Meteos actually played a good chunk of Lee Sin in Season 4 this way, and it had a pretty good effect. He tries to use this style in his first game versus SKT, and it starts out with some good invades and tracking Bangi. During his second invade, he steals Gromp, which really messes up Bangi's pathing, who inadvertently shows himself through the Wolf Spirit. This opens up Smoothie to move into the bot side of the jungle to go for his own deep ward, which once again spots Bangi and allows Meteos to move in for a blue steal. After the blue steal, most of his camps are up, which is going to lead to an excellent clear down to his blue buff. Later, he secures a dragon. If you told me that someone's Lee Sin was going to track the enemy jungler, steal away camps and buffs, get CS leads, and get a dragon while not hurting his team at all, but didn't get any kills or assists, I would have said that guy had a good early game. The problem is Jensen does his best to sabotage this. He doesn't react at all to Bangi clearing out his ward and coming behind him for a gank. Later, he dies 1v1 mid and gives away the blue buff that Meteos just worked to steal. It's true these deaths contribute to Meteos' CS lead because he holds mid wave, but the pathing advantages he generated for himself would have had a similar effect. Instead, he gets sucked into the mid wave and is not able to continue impacting the rest of the map. After the 11 minute dragon Meteos got, SKT has absolute control around mid lane and becomes a black hole he must react to. If Meteos doesn't go mid, Jensen gets run over. If Meteos does go mid, SKT has complete vision control and sees him coming. If he fights for vision control, SKT have a stronger 2v2 and it's extremely risky. It's nearly impossible to make a meaningful play around mid despite the fact that pressure requires him to go there. It's not really fair to fault him for what happens after this point. If you want to joke about him not hitting a Q on an enemy champion for the first 19 minutes, well, alright, but it'd be flat out wrong to say he wasn't impactful. In game 2, okay, it really wasn't that pretty. He was getting out jungled by Karsa pretty heavily in the first 10 minutes of the game. It wasn't like anyone else in the team was playing particularly well either during this time and had their own mistakes. The worst early game play came at 9.50 when the enemy mid laner is recalled and C9's dual lane has a wave pushing in top. Impact also has TP, so this is clearly a 5-man dive play waiting to happen. Instead, it seems like Jensen tunnels on wanting to match recalls with the enemy mid laner to keep winning 1v1 and misses out on this potentially game-changing play. As a result, Meteos ends up solo invading, which really isn't safe to do when your mid laner is recalled and you don't know where their enemy jungle and mid are. He does alright the rest of the game with most of his deaths coming from steal attempts. He has some huge team fight winning kicks at the end of the game, so he clearly has the mechanical skill to play Lee Sin. Is Meteos' Lee Sin the flashy early game monster that some other ones are? No. Is it good enough to be picked? Yeah, I think so. The blame's off this week, but if he has more games like the Flash Wolves one, then I do think he should stop playing it. The next topic to touch on this week is another leader of memes and rhymes, Perks. G2 and the rest of Europe really have been a massive flop at Worlds. His teammates are getting a lot of flame too, but he tends to be picking up the most of it due to the rhymes and likely his outspoken nature on Twitter. Straight up, yes, Perks is playing bad and likely the largest individual at fault in G2. Most of the criticism is correct too in terms of his itemization and his pretty poor positioning throughout the entire game. That said, he hasn't really Jensen the game yet and the overfocus on him is letting his other struggling teammates skate by with less attention than they should be. I was shocked that nobody mentioned the abysmal game out of Mythi vs CLG. He left Sven alone bottom to go roaming while CLG crashed a wave and G2 had no vision of anything going on. And later he tries to hold a turret that's going to go down no matter what. The whole team struggles to get anything done cleanly or efficiently in the late game and is always giving up big objectives for free. I guess I'm saying keep rhyming but just make sure to spread it out a little bit more. The last thing we'll hit on is Doublelift's Jin. 
Both he and Biofrost are struggling with some lackluster play at Worlds so far. TSM overall is doing well, but there is a lot of criticism targeted at the duo lane, and in particular the Jin pick. Overall, most of the criticism is justified as they got obliterated by energy. R uh, RNG. They got obliterated by RNG both in lane and out of lane. Doublelift has also been getting caught out of position a lot, and he's enough of a veteran that I would not blame it on Bjergsen's sick voice and lessened shot calling. Putting it on the Jin pick isn't right either. I understand that when you see a Lucian played like this. And then see a Jin played like this. The ulti back, he couldn't make it. Right here though, Doublelift opens up with his ultimate, hits his first, misses his second, and then cancels. I'm yeah. <laughs> you might want an extra serving of the first one. TSM are the kind of team that will pick the same thing over and over again if they think that's what gives them the best chance to win, like we saw with Lucian during the regular season and why we're seeing it now with Jin. TSM play a very pick-heavy style and tend to have double magic solo laners, which both make Jin the optimal pick for the comp, though maybe not for the player. Remember, these teams play 10 times the amount of games and scrims than we see. I'll assume for now that they have enough data to say Jin's the right pick, and I haven't seen it be bad enough that I think otherwise. This week's unsponsored High Five Common of the Week award goes to all of you Reddit. Congratulations! You correctly identified what was wrong with Doublelift's Jin vs Malzahar. No, it was not the lack of a QSS, it was the fact that he was ending up 1v1 versus it at all. That's it for this week's episode of The Blame Game. As you probably noticed, it's been moved off the TL YouTube channel and onto my own, which is where it will be for the future episodes. I'll also be putting out more content in general during Worlds and after during the postseason, so make sure to subscribe. Until next week. I'm only doing week two of Worlds for Riot, so that means I got a lot more free time. You can expect to see VOD reviews, longer form, less scripted stuff on the channel, as well as whatever else. I mean, do you really need more convincing to subscribe?